Let's see how we go about creating this program using the Embed Cloud Compiler. To create the program on page 3, we could follow through all the procedure that we did to create this program, lab 2 underscore a dot cpp. But there's a quicker and easy way to do this. What we can do is just click here, right mouse click, and go down and say clone. This allows us to duplicate all the work that we did. All we have to do is change the lab 2 a underscore copy to lab 2 B. And when we say OK, it's going to completely duplicate everything that we did before. So up here we now have exactly two copies of exactly the same thing. But what we can do go, is go here and put our code here without having to import the library, create this folder, all that stuff is done for us. And it's done very quickly using the clone command. Once we've typed in our program here, one of the things we want to do right away, as you can remember from the star here, is to make sure we've saved everything to make sure that we haven't lost any of what we put in here in our cloud compiler and will we'll be there when we need it. Now, notice we have a lab 2 underscore a and a lab 2 underscore a. What we can do is just click here and go down here and rename this to something that makes a little bit more sense, like lab 2 underscore b. Now, once that's changed, let's take a look at our code. If we go down right to the bottom, we can see that we've got our clear function, which is doing a printf backslash e inside the quotes. The backslash e is actually the escape key. So we have a backslash e here, or escape, and an escape here. Now, when we print escape, let's score bracket 2 capital J, we know the screen's going to be cleared, but we want to flush this string out to the screen so right away it's going to clear. And that's why we do f flush standard out. Now here we're putting in our coordinates. Let's just say we put 4 and 5 here. This becomes escape, let's square bracket 4, semicolon 5, capital H. And this, again, we'll flush to the screen to make sure it positions the cursor right away. Okay, when we push the reset on our microcontroller to run our program, it's going to say input your name. To be able to input your name, we're going to have to click inside this window, and then you can type your name and it will automatically center it. Now if we hit enter it's going to clear the screen and start again. So if I say Arnold Schwarzenegger, I hope I spelled his name roughly right, it will position and center any name you put in. So if I say D-A-V-E, erase, 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 D-A-V-E, erase, 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 and then I put in my name, it's not going to put those extra characters in. It's still going to center my name perfectly every time. Let's take a look and see how this is done. The first line of our code is integer max equals 80. And we're using that here to set up an array called name that will have up to 80 characters. And the reason for this is because the width of our screen is actually 80 characters. Now if we look a little further down, we have a forever loop here that says we're going to do this over and over for all time. So the first thing it's going to do is it's going to call up our clear function to clear the display. It's going to position the cursor in the top left corner, and then it's going to ask, input your name. At this point, it's going to get a character from standard in, which is our keyboard, and put it into name of zero. And it's going to say, if name of zero is not equal to an enter key, you're going to continue on through this code here. What it's going to do is then move this i variable to the next element of the array. It's going to get a gain from the keyboard another character and put it into that particular place. And it's going to check to see, did I type in a delete character? If I did, I'm going to back up twice because I've typed a character in. I have to back up for the character and I have to back up for the delete key. And that's why we have two minus i's. Then once we have typed in a enter key, it's going to then terminate the string with a null, which is standard for strings. The x is equal to 80 minus i over 2 is going to be centered. So it's basically splitting this in two. It's going to position on row 12 because 12 is the middle row. And so then it's going to say hit any key to continue. And it's going to grab the character from the keyboard and then start this whole process again so you can do this forever.